this paper explores the impact of modernism on early Canadian women photographers through a case study reconsideration of the work of Geraldine Moody and her dates are 1854 to 1945. Moody, an active professional photographer in the Canadian West operated three commercial studios from 1895 to 1898. She was the first settler woman to photograph in what is now the self-governed area of Nunavut where she made portraits of Inuit women between 1904 and nine that stand apart from conventional perspectives. Specifically, I argue that Moody used the practice of photography to construct her voice as a modern professional who held independent and progressive views. Evidence to support this argument draws upon an analysis of her photographs and writing some only recently available through a donation to the Glenbow Archives in Calgary. Informed by concepts of narrative, gender, performance, and decolonization, the study draws on a methodology of cultural analysis to consider Moody's work in its intersections with modernism. Professional photographer and precursor. Through her progressive attitudes and non-traditional portrait making, Moody can be considered a precursor to the photographers of the modern movement, which took hold in Canada between the two world wars. Other studies have positioned Moody as one of the first women documentary photographers in Canada. As art historian Martha Langford asserts, her photographic practice stands apart from the widespread pictorial work of many Canadian photographers because of its more documentary nature. Moody's work was informed by the conventions of commercial portrait photography while at the same time sharing characteristics of documentary photography, such as sharp focus. Breaking with tradition, she presented an alternative, a more empathetic and realistic view of her Indigenous subjects. Moody's best known and widely circulated photograph Kutuk Tuk, deaf mute Inuk girl, Fullerton Harbor, is a profoundly enigmatic example. I will return to this image later. This contrasts with much of the colonial, of the photo colonialism prevalent in the work of most documentary photographers of the time, who made ethnographic records more reflective of a dominating colonial and hegemonic ideology. See, for example, this anonymous photograph titled A Variety of Beadwork Styles and naming the women only by nicknames, Pikey, Hattie, and Nettie, Cape Fullerton. It is noteworthy that Moody's recording system often included her subjects' Inuit names. In her diary, she writes that nicknames were more commonly used as identifiers by others on the expedition. Her use of correct naming was a significant step, not only in respectful practice, but in establishing the identity of her sitters. In addition, Moody provided the viewer with a look inside her minimalist studio to share the visual negative narratives she recorded, many of which depicted relationships between her subjects, highlighting the mother-child relationship. Inuit woman wearing beaded deerskin dress made for Lady Grey, 1906, is one such example. Moody herself was a mother of six children. She balanced raising a large family with a professional career and demonstrated the perspective of a modern working mother. She did so while her partner, John Douglas Moody, was often away on long exploratory missions as an officer for the Northwest Mounted Police. Her interest in photography gave her a significant outlet from the extensive domestic activities expected of most settler women during the time. Moody's forward-thinking attitudes are documented in her personal papers that have recently come to the public domain. Access to her writing had been almost non-existent until a significant donation was made to the Glenbow Museum and Archives in 2015 by Don Percival and Elizabeth Ard, great-grandchildren of the Moody's. It was showcased in the exhibition North of Ordinary, 
the Arctic photographs of Geraldine and Douglas Moody curated by archivist Susan Coyman in 2017. Among Moody's papers, there is a letter to her mother, which chronicled her experiences as part of the Northern Expedition in diary form. It was written between October 1904 and July 1905. In one of the entries, Moody explains that, quote, she had her first lady visitors and they do not like to be called Eskimos, but Inuit, end quote. Moody was quick to note cultural difference that she encountered and her diary entries confirmed her empathy for her subject. This acquisition also included copyright papers from the Canadian government. An astute businesswoman, Moody copyrighted her photographs, evidence of a modernist attitude towards her career. By doing so, she was able to deposit her photographs in the British Museum in London. Geographer Moira Hanrahan recognizes the care that Moody took to assert authorship and the commitment to her career that seeking copyright represented. Reading photographs. Moody's work encouraged women photographers who followed her to become image makers who were travelers, not merely tourists, on a path to renormalize stereotypical depictions of women. Thus, Moody used photographs in a way that can now be read as agents of change, informed by concepts including narrative, gender, performance, and decolonization. As feminist author and activist Rebecca Solnit has written, quote, we live in a world where unaccountable numbers of women have had their creative and professional capacity undermined by trauma and threat, by devaluation and exclusion, end quote. Moody's images reflect a desire to share the narratives of the women she photographed. Art historian Christina Huno points to the significance of telling women's stories to change how the past is viewed. Lighting, props, clothing, and backdrops were arranged to support a gendered narrative of Inuit identity. Her collaborative process is apparent in three examples of her work, all portraits of Kutuktuk. These photographs tell the story of an Inuit girl evolving from a shy teenage mother to a more self-aware young woman. Here I return to one of Moody's most compelling portraits where Kuchuktuk's gesture of drawing back the curtain invites the viewer to consider the possibilities that might lay behind it. In a third image, the photographer moves closer to her subject to make a portrait that appears more spontaneous and more modernist in its approach. How we read these images matters. When we attempt to decolonize the visual representation of Indigenous women in the Canadian North, Moody can be positioned as working in a contact zone that facilitated a transcultural exchange between the surveyor and the surveyed. Her perspective was clearly privileged. However, the images she created speak of personal encounters. As a result, the visual narratives in these photographs are complex. Curator Sarah Milroy has written about Canadian modernist women painters such as Emily Carr. It was clear that, quote, Despite their privileged vantage point, they were looking carefully at everything their male counterpoints were not, often striving to forge connections across a cultural divide, end quote. The same thing could be said about Moody as she photographed her Indigenous subjects. In conclusion, despite a considerable passage of time, these images continue to fascinate viewers. They allude to both social history and theater, drawing us in to investigate the work of a privileged settler woman who was photographing at the intersection of cultures. This analysis is significant because it builds on current biographical and art historical research to consider Moody's images as a reflection of issues regarding the visual representation of Indigenous women. The broader context adds an essential dimension to this research by examining Moody's photos as artifacts that reveal attitudes and practices related to gender 
narratives in colonial Canada. As has been established, Moody repre presented her subjects in a more empathetic manner that transcended the cultural objectification of ethnographic studies to offer a more modern visual representation of her subjects. Thank you.